Hello, Aidan. Well played. Um, I just wonder when an innings takes flight like it did for South Africa tonight and you know, all those runs and whatnot, how much, how much of that is, is planning and plotting and, and, and thinking? And at, is there some point where your instincts and your desire just take over? Yeah, I think you do a lot of planning and stuff like that before the game. Um, I think it's natural for most teams to speculate how conditions are going to play, especially South Africans coming over to India. Not always 100% sure. Um, and then I think you get out there and the, the wicket starts playing really well and it's initially a, a big sigh of relief. And then secondly, I think what you mentioned now, a lot of instinct does take over and um, sort of see ball, hit ball sort of mentality. Um, so marrying the two of them, I suppose, is quite crucial. But um, yeah, we, we're thankful that we, we got a belter of a wicket here tonight. Aidan, um, yourself, Quinton and Andrasi, uh, all three of you had quite, uh, not emotional, but quite big celebrations when you reached the milestone. Um, w w why do you think that is? Is that just because it's a, the, a World Cup stage and you guys wanted to start well, or, or what was what was that? Yeah, it's a, it's quite strange because you almost get this thing that just takes over your body um, at certain moments. So I think there's a lot of passion in this team to to give our absolute all at this World Cup and see how far it can get us. Um, been known to start pretty slowly, be it in a series or maybe world events and things like that. So put a lot of emphasis on today's game um, to start well and, and play the same cricket we've been playing that's, that's managed to, to sneak us into this comp. So I think it's all of those e emotions sort of mixed up and, and building up um, that sort of just comes out and um, a lot of pride naturally for the three of us as well to when it's your day, try cash in and, and really make it, it count. So, yeah, a, a mixture of quite of a lot of things, I would, I would say. Aidan, obviously very satisfied with the century itself, but just also how chuffed are you in the manner that you played? Um, um, it, was, it was proper orthodox cricket shots. Um, and how satisfying is it for you as a, I want to, I almost want to say, a top-order technician, you know, to actually go out and actually hit a 49 ball 100 without actually really resorting to many fireworks? Yeah, it was a strange one. I mean, I certainly didn't wake up this morning thinking today would turn out that way. Um, but gave a, a couple of balls up front to get a feel of the wicket and eventually realized watching Kuni and Rassi bat and, and then having that initial feel that it was a really good wicket. Um, the outfield was really fast, so value for shots is always there. And um, that's almost what, what I was thinking the whole time was if you're setting up to, to hit really strong, hard cricket shots, um, the outfield and the pitch helps you out quite a lot as well. So um, it worked luckily tonight. Balls hit gaps. I mean, they don't always hit gaps uh, and it could be a different story. But um, yeah, thankful it worked out that way. And again, uh, it was a really good pitch. So that, that definitely assisted. Aidan, do you think as a team you've sent a message to everyone else in the tournament having hit the highest score ever in a World Cup? I'm actually not too sure. Um, the way batters are, are playing nowadays, you wouldn't be surprised if that record is broken in this comp as well. So um, it's nice for us to be able to go through the gears as a unit. I think a lot of credit has to go to Rossi and Quinny for setting up that platform. Um, it's hard work, always up front. Um, they bowled well the back end of the power play and their, their spin actually started bowling really well just outside of the power play um, or, or whenever he came on. So for them to put the hard work in like that and then to allow the, the middle order to free up nicely, uh, they might not get as much credit as they deserve. So certainly hope that, that they do get that credit after tonight. Uh Aiden, uh, I know you've been doing this for a while, scoring big runs in the middle overs. Uh, but can you just, you know, talk us through the process of firstly, as somebody who was a top order batter, firstly to realize that, you know, you can do it in the middle uh, overs, and then the process of what what went into becoming that batter. Sorry, the, the last part of the question. The what 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 kind of work went into actually uh, doing it? Yeah, I think you you do try evolve as a batter and. It's it's weird when you, you bump your head a few times, maybe exploring options that 
are not your plan A and, and are not necessarily your strengths, but you try to explore them in the nets. Sometimes get confidence from it, try to bring it out in a game and it, it doesn't work out and you go back home and you think, why, why am I doing that um, instead of sticking to your strengths? But um, ultimately, that's what it's about. You, you, you have options as a batter and each batter's options will be quite different. Um, but it's about really committing to those options and, and backing them and if it comes off, it's fantastic. But if it doesn't come off, at least you, you can sleep a bit better at night knowing you, you stuck to your strengths and, and to your options. Uh, hi. Uh, you were exceptional with the bat uh, as, a, as a unit. But do you think you conceded some runs uh, with the ball, uh, which can be a problem you know, going into a tournament if the target is not that high? Can that create a, a bit of a concern for you guys, the bowling bit? Yeah, not too much of a concern. I think, like I've mentioned, it was a really good wicket. Um, it probably came on even better under lights as well and in the back half of our innings it was due as well so um, it, it was a belter of a wicket. I think there were certainly phases throughout our bowling innings where we could have been better. Um, we created a couple of opportunities and, and that's good to see when you're on a, a really good wicket that we're still able to create opportunities in the middle and hopefully going forward you, you take those opportunities, you keep the pressure on, you keep momentum on your side and um, maybe you, you reduce them to 40, 50 runs less. And, but, um, yeah, the bowlers, it's, it's tough on a wicket like that, a ball that's traveling and, and not a really big outfield. So I think you try to look at it from both sides and, and see how you can improve still going into the next game. Eden, you talked about uh, modern-day ODI batting. Do you think it's becoming more of an extension of T20 batting? And and also that we talked about the anchor role in T20s when you when you were here during the IPL. So do you think you have designated roles in ODI cricket too, or is it just a tempo that the entire team has to maintain from start to end? I think when you when you get off to really good starts like that, it's on on the next guy to maintain that intensity, if not increase it. Um, but in terms of it being an extension of T20 cricket, it's a tough one because each conditions or each venue will have different conditions and you still have to be able to, to adapt to that. We might get to luck now and the pitch might be really tough and then you certainly won't be playing T20 cricket necessarily on, on a, a wicket that's tough. So assessing those sorts of things, um, developing game plans according to those conditions is, is still quite vital, I feel, in 50 over cricket. Are you being for real now? <laughs> no, I don't know. It's just, yeah, things just happen. I've, I've <laughs> Happy. Thanks, guys. Thank you.